uh, some sheet metal brakes, various sizes, and uh, we'll explain some of the differences. And after we do that, then we'll show you how to make a few pieces with one of our most popular brakes. Uh, here is one of our more popular brakes. It's a 48-inch, 12-gauge box and pan brake with a 6-inch box depth. And I'll show you why it's that way. Uh, you're going to have 48-inch bending length, and it's made strong enough to bend 12-gauge mild steel. In stainless steel or galvanized, it'll be a little thinner than that, but as it comes, it's rated for 48 inches of 12-gauge mild steel. It's a box and pan brake because it has the different segments in here. Some people call that a finger brake. We'll get a little bit more in-depth uh, with that later, but for right now, you can see all the little segments, so this is the box and pan brake. It's a 6-inch box depth because if you were to measure from here where it would touch the brake to here, that would be 6 inches. So it will do a box as, high, as tall as 6 inches. All right, and here's your cam adjustment that will adjust the clamp of your brake. Now, just to go over some of the terminology, the piece that you bend up, some people call that a leaf, most people call that uh, an apron. That is something um, every brake has, every good quality brake has, um, but we normally will call that an apron. Here are your counterbalances. The counterbalance is not to assist you in bending, it's just to remove some of the weight of the apron as you lift it to a little bit less operator fatigue. You should not be hanging off of your counterbalance to make your bend. These weights are adjustable for different operators for different brakes. You'll, this is pretty high here, so it makes that apron awful light. So I would bring this down to make it a little heavier for you. This brake also has adjustments here that will bring this apron up to the height of the bed. Uh, because as this wears, you may go ahead and remove this, have the top of it machined again, so when you bring it back, you will adjust that. You have an adjustment screw down here and some lockdown screws here. Normally, that'll be one, one thing you'll just adjust when you buy the brake new and probably never touch it again. But that is, on your commercial grade brakes, normally you'll have that. Your hinge pin, a little bit of oil here, once in a while will be fine. Uh, then you have a clamp. The bed of the brake is here, which is what the clamp secures itself to. When you open this up, the bed of the brake is back here. All right? Now, this is the clamp of the brake, and it, they call it the clamp because when you pull down the handles, it'll clamp the material onto the bed of the brake. Now, both of these handles, you should feel them just kind of snap in when you get to where they should be. All right? You don't want it to just fall in, and you don't want to have to really tug on it. You just want it to kind of snap in. And the way you adjust this is on this particular brake is these screws here, the bolt here. Now this is either welded or screwed into here. On this brake it's welded, so you have two nuts here, two jam nuts. To adjust your clamping pressure, you adjust these up or down. And you need to adjust your clamping pressure almost every time you change material thickness. If you put a piece of eighth inch material in here, it, it won't come down quite as far as if you had a piece of 22 gauge. So you will adjust this to adjust your clamping pressure. Then you have a radius and setback adjustment. On this particular brake, it's a nice big piece back here. All right, now to adjust the radius and clamping pressure, or your radius and setback adjustment, just loosen your cam a little bit so it'll have a little bit of room to move, and then turn this that will move the clamp of the brake in and out on the bed. Okay? The sharper the radius you need to be, the further this clamp needs to be out in relationship to the apron at a 90 degree bend. We'll go through that a, a little bit more in depth in a minute, but that'll just give you a rough idea on this particular brake. Then over here, we have a 4816 uh, heavy duty brake. And this one's made in the States, so it has a little bit different configuration, okay? On this one, you still have your cam that, it, that will pull your clamp down, okay? 
and then you have your radius and setback adjustment here. It uses the same basic thing that we have on the other, but this one has the bonus of a lockdown bolt. Okay, you don't really have to worry about the clamp of the brake going forward because your, the pressure of your material is going to be pulling it back. So you will loosen this, adjust the clamp of the brake to two times your metal thickness against that apron with that 90 degree bend, and you'll use the loosen this nut and loosen this to move the head back or forth to get that radius or setback adjustment that you're looking for. On this brake, the counterbalance goes here, and this again is a box brake, and it'll do a box four inches deep because that's the measurement from the tip of the finger to where your material would touch. Okay? Like I say, that's a 4816 box of pan brake. And again, it's a box of pan brake because it has, or a finger brake because it has removable segments. That's kind of tough to get in there and see this, but each one of these are segmented. And there are different uh, widths of those fingers. You'll find some fours, you'll find some twos, and some threes. Some of the bigger brakes we have, you'll find uh, maybe some one inches and some fives, and even some twelves or some twenty inch fingers. All right? And now we'll take a look at our standard brake. Now, the difference between a box and pan and a standard brake is the clamp on a standard brake is all one piece. There are no fingers in here to remove, it's all one piece. This is a, a popular brake, um, but most people go with the box and pan. It's got a lot more versatility for a little bit more money. This uses a little different radius and setback adjustment also, uh, but like I say, basically it's just like the big ones, only it's smaller. Your apron moves up and down. Your clamp is worked off of your cams. The bed of the brake is stationary. Now on this particular brake, to, to adjust your radius and setback adjustment, there's a bolt inside here that you would use your wrench and loosen this bolt. This is on a one inch, this brake has a one inch radius or setback adjustment. Okay, now this bolt right here under my finger, you would put your wrench on that, loosen it up a couple of turns, so the head of this brake, the clamp, would slide forward or back. Again, the closer this is to your apron, the sharper that angle will be. The further back that is, the less that angle will be, the, the less that radius will be. On this one, it has a one inch, and on here you also have a pivot point here that holds the uh, clamp of the brake. A little bit of oil in there once in a while is all you need to do, a little bit of grease. You don't really need to go too crazy with that, uh, just a little bit. Now on this brake, it uses a little different uh, configuration to adjust your clamp. Okay, right here, see how it brings that head down? Alright, now on this brake, you have a couple of... Uh, lock nuts here on a threaded rod. So you'll loosen these lock nuts, adjust this rod up or down to adjust your clamping pressure. There again, you want it to that last inch or so, you want it to kind of snap into place. If it just falls in, it's too loose. Uh, if it just falls in, it won't hold your material. And as you try to bend your material, it'll slide back on you. Okay? So uh, radius and setback adjustment under here, clamping pressure. Uh, is adjusted here. Again, this is your apron, this is your clamp, and the main part of the bed is, or the main part of the brake is the bed. And here you have some more uh, oil light bushings in here. You put a little bit of oil in there, keep that brake uh, working for years, and these are replaceable in this particular unit. You can knock those out uh, with a little punch or chisel from this side, knock in a new one, and you're ready to go again. Okay? Then a little bit bigger version of that is what we call our racer brake. A lot of the guys use this. Now this is a 6 foot 22 gauge capacity brake, meaning it's, it has a 6 foot bending length from left to right. 22 gauge capacity means it'll bend material mild steel 22 gauge or thinner. Uh, on most of the brakes that we will sell you, um, they're rated for a material at the length 
and the thicker that material is, the shorter that piece needs to be. But in general, you know, four foot 16 gauge break is going to bend four feet of 16. It might bend a, a foot of 12 gauge. Uh, just depend on the quality of the break and, and how you have it adjusted. There again, the same same thing. Apron. The bed of the brake is back here. This is the clamp of the brake. It uses the same adjustments I just showed you on the smaller brake, on this larger brake, as far as your uh, radius and setback uh, and clamping pressure work. Okay. Now on this one, it has a removable apron support. It's kind of hard to see that in the camera, but it has some bolts here that you can remove that so you can get in and do a tighter uh, reverse bend. As it is, it'll do about a two and a half inch reverse bend, but you can remove this apron support and get down to a half inch minimum reverse bend. Okay, now we're going to take a look at one of our most popular brakes and show you how to make a few pieces. Alright, now we're going to take a look at uh, one of our more popular sheet metal brakes and show you some of the things that can be done with this by really anybody. Uh, just a little bit of work here and there and you'll get it figured out. Not a hard thing to do. The thing you have to remember is a sheet metal brake is not a precision piece of equipment. If you need something within five or ten thousandths, uh, sheet metal brake is probably not the thing to use. Uh, you know, they're going to get you to make a real nice piece and you can make a bunch of them and do a nice job of it. But remember, it is not a precision piece of equipment, uh, you know, down to the thousandths anyway. Okay, now this is our most popular brake. This is a 48 inch bending length. It is a 16 gauge capacity. And it'll do a box depth of about three and a half inches. Alright, again that's measured from here to here. We'll go over a couple of things real quick. Here's your apron. You're going to grab that to bend. The bed of the brake is the main part of the brake and your clamp is the piece that clamps the material to the bed so you can clamp your workpiece. Here's your cam that will close the uh, clamp onto the brake, onto the bed of the brake. And here's your radius and setback adjustment on this particular brake. On this one it uses a cam with an eccentric that you would uh, with a lock screw back here. So you're going to loosen that lock screw and turn this uh, eccentric to move that clamp or the head of the brake further or back in relationship to the apron at a 90 degree bend. Okay, one way to check that to be sure that your brake is straight from end to end is take a couple pieces of material, whatever it is you're working with is good, go down to the end of the brake within a, a couple inches of the end of the brake, clamp that piece in, Go to the other end of the brake, clamp another piece in of the same material of the same thickness. Okay? Clamp that in. Alright, it's secure. You're going to grab the apron of the brake and go all the way back until the apron touches the clamp. Give it a little bit of squeeze. Alright, now open it up. Take out your two pieces. And now you're going to mate up the two pieces. Okay? Now what you want to be sure of when you do this is uh, you come up with the same angle. So what you want to do is you have a piece on each end, bend them up, and then when you're going to fit them back together, you need to be sure you have an angle of these that is the same angle. All right, you have to get a good tight picture of this so you can tell. Okay, these pieces should fit right inside each other. Okay, now if they don't, then you need to adjust your brake a little bit more. All right, they need to be the same angle. If they're not the same angle, let's say one of them is uh, sharper than the other one, if I can bend it by hand, uh, when you put them inside each other, they won't fit. Okay, uh, let me just give you a quick. Okay, now that one I bent down a little bit more so you can see they don't really fit anymore. Okay, now since this one has the sharper angle than this one, 
you can do one of two things. You can bring the side with the uh, larger radius forward or the side with the smaller radius backward. Typically, you'll move the one with the sharper radius backward uh, and you again you want your distance between the clamp of the brake when it's clamped to the bed and the apron of the brake when it's at a 90 degree bend two times your metal thickness again that's two times your metal thickness between this edge right here and the edge of your apron when that's at a 90 degree bend. Don't try to use feeler gauges because it'll never work. Always do your test pieces and you may have to do that two or three times to get them correct but like I say the one with the sharper angle needs to go back. Two times your metal thickness between here and here. Uh, if you want more of a radius move the head back, a sharper radius move the head forward. Alright, now we're going to, uh, uh, this particular brake has a removable apron, uh, apron support, so uh, I need to make a couple of pieces where I need to remove this. Now if I'm doing 48 inches of 16 gauge material, I would need to leave this in, in place, otherwise my apron could uh, bend a little bit. But for the pieces I'm making today, I'm going to go ahead and remove this. And I'm going to put it someplace safe so when I'm done making the pieces I'm making, I can go ahead and put this back on. Just takes a minute. Usually there's anywhere from four to six, maybe eight bolts holding that on there. Um, so you can make the pieces that, you're, that are, give your angle support there. All right. We'll make a couple of pieces here uh, just to give you an idea of what you can do with the sheet metal brake. Uh, one of the more popular pieces. Um, is something like uh, maybe a rocker panel for a car. Now, remember, the piece I'm making here, all it has to do is fit the trash can, okay? So I'm not going to measure anything. Uh, a helpful hint for a lot of people because they get mixed up when they're making pieces, you know, put an X for like the outside of the car or the outside of the box or whatever it is you're working on. That way you can keep oriented because you have to remember, all the brake ever, is ever going to do is bend up. On, when you're bending sheet metal, a lot of times you have to remember one step ahead. Okay? Now, like I said, I'm going to use that X as the outside. Now I'm going to come up. I'm going to do a 90 degree bend. Go back down. Now I'd like to make a little uh, gentle radius here, like as under your car door. So what I've done here is I've made me a couple of pieces. Uh, all they are is doubled over down here on the bottom of the same material I'm working with. The important thing here is I've doubled over the same material I'm working with. If you use a lot thinner stuff, it just won't work for you. Whatever it is you're working with, double that up. Okay. Now I'm going to space this out. And now that should allow my piece to move. Okay. Now, why do you want that to move? Well, I want that to move so I can make my radius. Okay, and this does take a little bit of a, a little bit of a knack. You have to do this a few times. Okay, now if I need this to exactly uh, fit something, I'm going to measure this. Uh, each one of those little curves, each one of these little bends, maybe an eighth inch apart, a quarter inch apart, a half inch apart, whatever it is. Okay, now that has allowed me to do a nice gentle radius here and that would be under your uh, door jam for your rocker panel for a car, maybe a machine guard work, something like that, you're going to need that. Okay, now, uh, that's the only time you need those shims is so that piece will slide in there. I usually have a couple of these and I stick them right on the top of the brake, so the next time I need them, I already have them. Okay, now like I say, just real quick here, I'm going to make something that will be similar to a, a rocker panel. Okay. I've got it clamped in. I'm going to go up. Now, where's that next bend going to be? It needs to go up. Okay, so I'm going to put my piece in. Now, here's where my angle support, apron support, would get in the way. That's why I had to remove that. Okay, now I want to clamp this down. Sometimes you got to give it a little push to get it in there. So you go up. And metal is a little forgiving, so it doesn't have to be exact on. 
If you need a little more, a little less, you can work it with your hand. Okay, now I need to make another bend in there. I'm going to set it up here. Now this is setting on top of the apron, so most places will tell you minimum reverse bend. What they mean by that basically is how thick is that apron, okay? Because for all intents and purposes, this is about a half inch, so you would tell people in our specs it's got a minimum reverse half or a minimum reverse bend of one half of an inch. Okay, but we're going to cheat a little bit and push that in while and then we gotta hold that in while we bring the clamp down so it doesn't just pop right back out. Okay, make another bend, a little bit more, and now we've got something uh, a lot less than a half inch, it's about a quarter inch minimum reverse bend. Okay, now we're going to put this back in, come back down, clamp it, alright, now we're going to go back, okay, because I would normally have this go over like a piece of weather stripping, something like that, go up, come back, and now I have this, okay? Now this is, uh, like I say, this is going to fit my trash can, but for you, you want it to fit your rocker panel. Now, I'm going to make what they call a hem, which is basically bringing this back down on itself. And the way I do that is, I put this into the brake, and I hold it. i got to give a little bit of pressure on there, and pull on that handle at the same time, okay? So it doesn't pop out of there. There you go. Usually it takes two or three times, and now you got a, what they call an open hem. How you have a little bit of gap in here. Now, what they call a closed hem, you can do that by putting that piece back in there, clamping it up there, and that'll pretty much close that hem up. Okay? On a car, on this particular application, you'd want an open hem so it would slide up over the piece you're going to lock this onto, and then you're going to weld this in there so it actually fits your car. All right, now that, like I say, that would be like a rocker panel for a lot of cars. All right, now here's something you might uh, get into. You might want to make a rub rail, uh, like in the bed of a van or a truck, uh, something like that. Now, I'm going to make uh, one of those here, like I say, again, to fit your exact car, you're going to have to do some measuring. I'm just going to make this piece fit the trash can when I'm done. So it doesn't have to be uh, real close, but just to give you a general idea, this is what it's going to be like. Okay? Now on that particular piece, you can see where it's raised up there about a quarter of an inch, and that would be like the bed of your van, uh, bed of a truck, uh, maybe even a body line. Okay? Now I'm going to make uh, a little different bend here. A lot of people wonder how the heck you do this. But I'm going to bend this up. I'm going to make this a 90. It can be whatever degree you want. And I'm going to pull this back down with my hand. Okay. Now what that's going to do for me, it's going to give me a nice, gentle body line. This could be a transmission tunnel. Uh, but of course this would be the beginning or the end of it. And you would do a lot of these um, and measure so it would actually fit your car again. But that would be like a body line. And see how it's tapered there? And it's a lot more sharper radius than what it is here. That's because I had it in at an angle. Okay? We'll do that again. Um, just a little different this time. Okay, I'm in there straight. I go up. I come down. If you don't have a bead roller, you may end up doing something like this. We'll show you a bead roller here in a minute. Okay? You want a bunch of these little body lines right next to each other. Like I say, you can go up to a 90, a 45, whatever your particular application calls for. Um, this makes it nice on a lot of custom cars. They'll do something like this, uh, and they'll wonder, you know, how in the heck did they do that? Well, that's how we did that. Okay, that's a bunch of little ridges, and all that was, I put it in the brake, bent it up to a 90, bent it back down by hand, and it give you a nice round radius here. That way it's not real sharp. It's like I say, a lot of custom cars, You'll see something like that in a trunk or the floor pan or even on a door bottom, something like that. Okay, now we're going to make something like a door bottom on a typical car. You're going to come in here. All right, now we're going to make, go back, and this is a 45 degree angle this way, but it's a 135 from here. Okay, you're going to do that. 
you're going to make eh, somewhat of an open hem. You don't want to smash it down on there real bad because this has to go up over your existing door, the bottom of that. Okay? Now, uh, I'm going to use my little shims here so I can slide that through there again to give me a nice round radius. And here again, you're going to, you know, measure this to fit your car, but this is what you're going to do. Okay? Now here's like the bottom of your car door. That's what that's going to look like. All right? Now let's say I get halfway up that car door, and maybe there's a body line in there. Okay? And this can go in or out. Like I said, depending on what your, how your car is made. Okay? Now that time I just did a 45, and I come back down. So right there's the side of your car door. Okay? But hopefully uh, this one won't rush through quite as bad or ding up as bad as the other one you had. That'll make you a nice little car door right there. Um, let's try to make uh, something like a transmission tunnel. Okay. Uh, like I say, here again, you know, all this has to do is, is fit my trash can, so I don't have to be real fancy in here. Okay, I'm going to go up on this one, um, like maybe a race car. I may have a couple of 90s in there. Okay, something like that. Now I have my flange here that I can weld or screw or rivet to the floor pan, and then this is going to come across, cover my transmission, my shifter, holes in the floor. Uh, guard work, whatever you want it to be. All right. Now, maybe I'll do uh, like a gentle bend uh, here. Okay. Uh, maybe the other side of that. Like I say, depending upon your application, you may have something like this. It can go up. Now, you've got to be careful when you get into here. Sometimes that won't work very well. Depending on how big your piece is back there. Okay? You might have a different transmission tunnel here. Like I say, this is going to screw in, this will go up, this will go over. If you want more of a tape uh, transmission tunnel, it may be something like this. Like I say, we used to do this uh, a lot in the guard work of uh, the place I used to work. Okay. Now I'm going to use my little shims again. Like I say, these are always handy. Have have some of these laying around for every size material you, you work with. Uh, you will find they'll come in handy. Okay, now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pretend that I measured that. Okay. And you may do this in four or five sections to actually make it for your transmission tunnel. Okay. Now here again, you can see that this is a lot bigger radius than here on the back side. And then this is going to come over to your other side. You're going to do the same thing and then go back down. Rivet it, screw it, uh, glue it, whatever you're going to do to make that thing fit. Okay, now we're going to show you how to make a box. Alright, now we're going to make uh, a box or a pan. Uh, for that, you need a box and pan brake, like I said, which has these fingers uh, or segments, whatever you want to call them. Now, on this one, we removed a couple of those already, save a little bit of time, but basically, all you're going to do is you're going to, uh, whatever's holding yours down, remove one or two of those until you get a gap in between here so you can make a box the width that you want to make. On this particular box, like I said, it doesn't have to fit anything, so we're just going to use it to bend up. Uh, whatever it ends up being. Alright, now you can do this, you can do three sides of this on a regular standard brake. So we're down here where it would resemble a standard brake. You put it in. Now we've already notched out our corners here. Okay, we have a special notcher, uh, we call a corner notcher that will do that. A pair of 10 snips, one of our shears, whatever you need to do. And the box depth would be measured from here to here. On this brake, uh, like I say, it's in that three to four inch range, so uh, we only got about an inch on this, so we'll be fine. Now we're going to put that in, run the clamp down to the edge, bend that up to a 90, 
and all metal has a little bit of spring back so each time you're working with metal you'll experience a little bit of different uh, spring back you may have to go 95 to end up with the 90 okay that's one side now we're going to come over here and do our second side now I need to move this over here by the finger so it'll go past that okay now I bring this up I'm going to do my 90 again go back down now I've got two sides of my box right here all right now I'm going to come over here do my third side and the finger does not have to match up exactly to the width of your box I get a lot of calls saying you know I got a box that's uh, three and a half inches and I only have a finger that's three that's fine center that up on that box and you'll be fine you'd like to have it, uh, that uh, to be less than a half inch gap you know like if you have a five inch box use a four inch finger it doesn't have to be exactly now we're going to go ahead and put this one over here and this was where we need that box and pan break because see the sides of this box will go right up between these two fingers all right and like I say my uh, box is probably five inches wide my fingers only about three so I'm going to bring this up okay now if I don't like the quality of that bend, I may move this over a little bit to bend that corner up, okay? Same thing on the other corner. Like I said, it doesn't have to be exact. Bring that up, all right? Go back down, and now I've got what we call a box or a pan. And then you'll weld up these corners, and you'll have a drip pan, uh, something like that, okay? And that shows how to make a box and a pan. Next, we'll take a look at our bead roller. All right, now 